one of the damages wrought by colonialism is that it changes our understanding from what's based on a world with real history before our culture and our time, a world with real diversity into a world that simply reflects the preferences of the dominant culture. And so within the context of colonialism, uh, the, the original critical and, and transformative root of yoga is left out of the picture because if you include it, it would actually criticize and, and destroy the colonial environment that we're in. So in order for kind of colonialism to maintain its bubble, it leaves that out. And then yoga is reduced to uh, techniques of wellness. And so people then think about yoga, not in terms of, uh, they don't understand it in terms of how it was originally understood as part of how you're supposed to live your life successfully as a person. And, you know, in, in philosophy, we call that an ethical theory. Uh, we, we don't think about yoga that way. We pretend like we've got all of those questions figured out. And then yoga is just a tool that we're going to make use of to implement our various other ends and preferences. But those various other ends and preferences, insofar as that they are encouraged and developed within the world that we are in, are encouraged, encouraged and developed by colonialism. So, uh, so unless we take the time to learn about a time before our colonial epoch, where people were critical of the kinds of assumptions that we don't give, in, give any time questioning, but what we do is we don't learn yoga, we just reify colonialism. And so we just end up appropriating yoga as though it's something that isn't supposed to transform our lives, but rather fit in our lives. Uh, and that's like 99% of what people think of as yoga. It's a, it's a product you buy that fits in your life. It's not something that transforms your life. Um, so if you're actually interested in yoga, right, I think you need to uh, give some time to understanding the history of this, and I will be talking about that. And also, surprisingly, uh, you'll have to spend some time thinking about philosophy. And this is something that people uh, uh, usually don't like to do, but this is also a reflection of colonialism, because um, you can't have successful colonialism if people are asking questions <laughs> and, there, and there's a freedom to have a diversity of perspectives that are critically engaged. Uh, you only get colonialism off the ground if there's one view and everybody's supposed to buy it. So, uh, so really uh, decolonizing our understanding of yoga requires that we go back to the original philosophy. And that means doing something that's not uh, encouraged in a colonized world.